or on the camera. Anyway, hey, it's Andy from Two Dudes Reviews. Jay was supposed to be here, but he's always late. So, and you know, when you're cooking, time and temperature, right, is everything. So I need to get this chicken. So today we're doing a spatchcock chicken on my new master built gravity feed uh, 800 charcoal gravity feed charcoal grill. I don't know how you call it. That's what it is. It's a gravity feed charcoal grill, but it's model 800. Um, so 800 square inches. You can do a whole bunch of stuff on it. Today we're going to do a spatchcock chicken. I just wanted to cover some basics about the master built gravity feed. I've cooked a couple of things on here already. I did a pulled pork last weekend. It was fan flipping tastic. This thing ran eight hours at 250 degrees without a anything. Just put the charcoal in, light it, set temp, and go. So it was uh, amazing that way. So today we're going to do a spatchcock chicken. I'm going to cook at about 325 degrees. Should take a couple of hours. It's a fairly big chicken. We'll show that, uh, of course, when we put it on the grill. But I wanted to just cover a couple of things that I've learned over the last week operating this grill. Um, one of the things that I learned was um, that you always want to make sure that when you light it, this is open and your slides are out. And these slides, if you're wondering what this little thing is for, it's to hold those there. So this has just opened the airflow to the smoker, okay? What I'm going to do uh, when it's operating, okay? And that was kind of interesting. What I'm gonna do initially though, is I am gonna close them because I want the charcoal to start. So this was the number one thing that we had a challenge with. I had a challenge with relighting charcoal if you don't use it all. So some of the things that I learned um, this past week, cause I did pulled pork uh, a couple weeks ago and then last weekend I did smoked chili, which was really kind of neat. I didn't do a video on it and I'm sorry for that. But, um, I learned that when you're relighting old coals, you have to make sure that all of the ash is out of there and that it gets cleaned out pretty good. And I'm not going to go into super detail about that, but this is how easy this smoker is to use. We're going to just take and dump a bag of charcoal in there. I did that. You're not going to be able to see it. It's totally dark. There yeah, you go. a little bit. Okay. And then there's a door over here. Jill, if you want to come over here. I've got Jill, our fantastic uh, camera girl. And there's a couple of things here that you want to see. Can you see that? So this is where your lighter goes. All your charcoal's hanging out up here, and this is your ash can. Okay, back out for me, Jill, so I don't knock you over. I bought these charcoal lighters before I bought the grill. They're made by Masterbuilt, and they're fire starters, and they look like this. And oddly enough, they fit perfectly into that little slot. So we're going to push this into that slot and we're going to light it up. <laughs> Can you get that? All right. We're going to leave the door open for just a couple of minutes. And then once this is burning for a couple of minutes, we're gonna close the bottom door, leave the top door open, and let this just go ahead and make a fire in there. And then when we're ready to uh, set the temp, I'll show you how that goes. So our, our, our starter is lit down there at the bottom that I showed you earlier. And uh, we got a little bit of smoke coming out the top here. I pulled the, the dampers there. I'm gonna close this lid. And then I'm gonna come over to the, to the control panel here. We're gonna kick that on, hit temperature. I'm gonna set that at 325. And you're gonna hear the fan come on if I did it all right. There it is. So now there's a fan down here that's gonna blow on those coals and light that fire. Now we're started up, it's gonna preheat. We'll come back when it's ready to, when the chicken's ready to go on the grill. So if you haven't seen a spatchcock chicken before, this is what one looks like. So we're going to open this up. We took about 20 minutes to get up to our 325 degree temperature. Um, real quickly, I'm going to scrub this grate because I didn't do that. So this Master Chef grill, a couple of things about it. Number one, if you look at the, uh, there's very little on this because the, the pulled pork that I did um, was uh, um, 
I forget why it didn't mark it up. But if you look on the side over here, it says smoke. And then if you flip these over, it's very flat grates if you're grilling. So the, the heat distribution. One of the things I did also notice about this grill was the fact that there is a hot zone because your heat comes in from this side. So I did some meatballs on here actually a couple weeks ago after the pulled pork and the meatballs on this side didn't caramelize, didn't char up as much as the meatballs on this side. So when I put this chicken on, I'm going to put it on thick side to the right. And we're just going to go ahead, lay that in there. I'm sure we have or will do another video on spatchcocking a chicken. But basically just cut the backbone out, flatten it out, put your, put your rub on. Don't forget your temperature probe. I'm going to go right here in the middle of the breast. We're going to close that up. One of the nice features about this grill is actually this shelf. Kind of cool because it allows you to put stuff on there and then comes right out of the way. We're going to turn on our temperature and we're going to cook this sucker to 175 degrees in that breast and it'll be perfectly cooked. Crispy skin, by the way, at 325. I think we tend to find more crispy skin. And if you're wondering why this video looks so different than all of our previous videos, it's because Two Dudes Reviews is now in North Carolina. This is the uh, Smack Andy Silly Plate, by the way. In case he says something stupid, I just go, but dang. <laughs> <laughs> and in case you were wondering, he eventually showed up. So here yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, here yeah, we yeah. are. Come on, so one of the things I like about this master-built gravity feed smoker is that it stayed probably within in three degrees, four degrees, up or down, as it showed me on my phone. Um, so super, super consistent. Our chicken's at 175, 180 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, yep, we're gonna go ahead and, and pull this thing off. Uh, I talked earlier about crispy skin. No special ingredient here. Salt, you know, our, our spice blend. And uh, all you gotta do is just cook it 325. You wanna bring your... No, uh, I don't, I don't. Hold the, hold the pan for me. And all right, just hold this right here. Hold that right there, and we're just gonna put that chicken right there, and uh, we're done. Yeah. Super, super simple. Man, so, look uh, that thing. Master built. Yep, yep. Crispy skin, no big deal. Now, Jill coming back over here, we're gonna show you how to turn the thing off. So the react, all you really have to do to shut this thing down, hit the power button, and then we're gonna close both of these vents, and this fire will just burn itself out. Leave it open, and you're done. And with a cook that was three hours, let's say, mm -hmm. will you use a quarter of a bag of charcoal briquettes, half a bag? How efficient is it? Always based on your temperature, right? So at 325, you burn a lot more charcoal than you do at 225. So sure. it's just going to be based on that. I put, uh, I'm just going to look in here real quick. Is that hot? I, I, yeah, it's very hot. I had about eight, probably eight pounds of charcoal in there, and there's probably four pounds left. Okay. Would you look at that? I mean, well, would you look at that? It's a trick. Would you just look at that? Check it out. Would you so, look at that? Would you right. look at that? Come in look here. Come in, come in here close to that's, look at that. That's, that's it. <laughs> would all you right. look at that? So, that's an ode to one of our fellow YouTubers. There's the there's there's something I want to show everybody. This is what everyone wants to do on YouTube, right? Would you Crispy look at skin. That? By would the way, look at that. No baking powder, baking soda. <laughs> it's just normal rub. Okay. But we do want to kind of cover how you carve a chicken that's been spatchcocked. So we're just gonna take and take those wings off. I like to do the legs next. Now Andy, this is your first spatchcock chicken with this particular grill. Yes. You've done multiple spatchcock chickens on the uh, on the Camp Chef. The Weber and, and the Camp and Chef. And the Weber. Um, and initial kind of thoughts here. It's cooked perfectly. The skin is nice and crispy. Skin is crispy and tender. I don't. I, that's the temperature. Cutting it, three twenty-five. So just just to carve this bird. That's all we're gonna do. You take your knife in here, pull the leg back, and go right in between the joints. Now you've got all of your pieces separated out. The true key is carving the breast, and the breast should be sliced right on the other side of the 
that Rest membrane, well. that, that membrane in there. And then I'm going to come in here and I just went over the leg and then I'm going to slice all the way down the breast this way. That's a now, great technique. Now this breast nice. should come completely off. It's almost like a breast fillet there. Just yeah. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Now you want to slice the breast for serving this way. And that's across the grain. Across to make sure the grain. It's extra tender. Not that there's going to be a problem with the chicken not being tender if it's with the grain, but right. sometimes breast meat especially can can dry it can out dry if it's out. cooked improperly. So we're going to drop that right there. I'm going to move your pasta out of the way here. Yep. Make sure all those other bits of skin get on there. By the way, we discussed this earlier today. Pasta mm -hmm. here in the States can sometimes be a main course, like spaghetti or lasagna or ravioli or whatever. Right. Uh, but over in Italy, you guys have some firsthand experience traveling over there for vacation, and uh -huh. pasta is typically served as a side dish. Yeah? Pasta is a side. So, okay. so that's what we're doing today. You're going to have to watch another video for the fresh pasta portion, but we did make our own pasta. We got water getting ready to heat up. A little pesto pasta, a little chicken, great salad. We'll be ready to roll for dinner. We're not going to send a picture, or maybe we will. Maybe we will. Who knows? All right, until <laughs> next time. It's Andy. Jay. Two, 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 two reviews. reviews.